So tonight was the premiere of Checkered Past, and I watched it all the way through. It was fantastic. It started with, it was pretty much all season one, episode two, so technically the broadcast season one, episode ones, but they didn't show any pilots. They just showed the regular aired first regular episodes. So for Dexter's, it was Dexter's Rival and Dial M for Monkey, which title I can't remember. And then Grandpa Dexter or Old Man Dexter. Yeah, it was Old Man Dexter. Um, all three of those are pretty good. I think the strongest one out of those was Dexter's Rival. Uh, Dial M for Monkey was okay, but it was kind of quick and just kind of there and gone. Uh, Old Man Dexter just that sort of thing was funny when I was 11 or even when I was younger but now that I'm 31 uh, making fun of old people you know it, it can be funny if it's done right there's a lot of stuff that does it right but this is just the oh he's old he moves slow he falls asleep he can hardly chew things it's the kind of stuff where when you're when you're my age you go huh yeah, that's coming sooner rather than later, isn't it? I, uh, I wouldn't be so quick to laugh at, especially because I've seen my folks get closer to that. So, yeah. But, not a terrible episode by any stretch of the imagination. All of the episodes in Dexter's Lab was good. Then they moved on to Ed and Eddie, which was the Ed Touchables and Nag to Ed. Two fantastic examples of early Ed and Eddie episodes love the gag with the interrogation of Johnny and love the whole canker burgers thing in nag to Ed really solid and I should point out that most of these shows had their original credit sequences which was beautiful absolutely beautiful Dexter's had Dexter's was the only different one what they did with Dexter's Dexter's lab I mean what they did was they had a split screen and I'm sure they did this way back in the day, but I, I really don't remember because 2003 was, gosh, I mean, how many years ago was it now? I was only 11. I'm 31 now. Give me, you know, cut me some slack. But regardless, what they did was they played the ending song and they showed the credits on one side. So they did a split screen. Credits on one, one side and a montage of season one on the other. I don't remember that. Maybe somebody else does. Because for the most part, when I was watching Dexter's, it was just that traditional purple screen with Dexter and Dee Dee and the credits rolling. That's what I was expecting to see, so I was a bit surprised. And then they showed Cartoon Network Studios, the old the old static Cartoon Network Studios logo that said it was a Turner company. Um, the only one that had the animated Cartoon Network Studios logo was Billy and Mandy. Courage didn't have it. Courage didn't even have a Cartoon Network Studios logo. It was just stretch films, and then they went to the next bumper. Uh, but, yeah, from Ed, Ed, and Eddie, they went on to Billy and Mandy, which was season one, episode two, once again. And that was Toad Blatt's School of Sorcery, which was a Harry Potter parody. So, a bit dated of a reference, but it's still a fantastic episode, even if you know nothing about Harry Potter. You know, it just loosely bases itself off of that. But it's still a solid episode. And then following that is uh, real, I think it's called Real Live Hokey Monsters. It's a parody of the Pokemon TCG back when it was at its its height back then in 03. And um, that was really fun. Billy and Mandy was probably the funniest show in the lineup next to maybe Ed and Eddie. Ed and Eddie gets a lot funnier as it goes on later. The first season is pretty solid, but it really starts to make you laugh out loud as it goes on further. The uh, the second episode of Ed and Eddie's good, but it's not it's not exactly laugh out loud funny. I was laughing out loud at Billy and Mandy and at Dexter's with uh, Dexter's rival. Um, but then move on from Billy and Mandy to the last show, Courage the Cowardly Dog, um, which was The Shadow of Courage and. Laquack. Shadow of Courage being probably it, it was the one where Courage had the most dialogue. I don't know if it was the better of the two. I think Laquack had a lot more slapstick and, and just sort of running gags that were fun. 
And obviously, Lequack is a really fun character. I like whenever he shows up. He's a good villain. This was the introduction to him and the, the trope of him always escaping capture at the end and saying, they have not seen the last of Lequack. You know, it was... Or rather, it's, they have not heard of the last of Lequack. I thought whoever voice acted him did a fantastic job, by the way. But everything had their original credit sequence, but the selling point of this was this was a linear broadcast presentation the way that these shows were intended to be they were all stretched to widescreen but it wasn't it wasn't done poorly it was done magnificently you would have thought they were natively hd it was beautiful i was actually really struck by that so they did that and then they had their own bumper campaign which is which was a combination of adult swims landscape bumpers with uh these classic characters in the uh, in the environment so it was kind of like cn city in a way it was kind of a tribute to that and you could see the checkered past logo the skeleton with the uh checkered mouth and skull and crossbones sort of thing which by the way i want that on merchandise that such a cool looking logo i've got it on screen um but that emblem was placed all throughout the environment so you had to find where it was in some in some of the bumpers but the bumpers themselves were really really good it, it basically was what Adult Swim is doing now, and that's not a bad thing in my opinion, because I think Adult Swim has the best modern... They're one of the only channels, one of the only linear broadcast channels still doing bumpers, and they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful, and, th and that's the thing. The overall takeaway from this is not just the nostalgia, not me being 11 again, you know, because I've seen these shows multiple times throughout the years. I still watch most of them regularly already. The reason this was so special was because... It harkens back to a time when linear broadcast TV was just an innocent escape. And it was relaxing, it was soothing. You could turn your mind off, you could turn your social media away, or your, I guess at the time, your message boards. You could forget about your bad day at school. You know, you could just enjoy it. And that's exactly how this thing is marketed. And that's how it's presented. And it's a beautiful presentation. A lot of people say, well, why don't you just watch this stuff on Max? But they're missing the point. The point of this is to reinvigorate the linear TV experience. Having these four shows back to back in a classic styled block brings you back to that time, not just of childhood innocence, but of classical linear television and why it's good. You know, I was worried that I wouldn't stuff wouldn't keep my attention, that maybe it would get boring and not be funny. No, it was hilarious. Every show had great episodes that kept me laughing authentically. This is the first time since probably my early 20s that I've been able to sit down in front of TV and authentically watch shows back to back, laugh at them and enjoy them. And it I was borderline emotional. I'm not going to lie with you guys because I haven't had that experience in years, and that was an experience that defined my childhood as somebody who really didn't have a whole lot of friends growing up in terms of just the logistics of where I lived. I had some neighborhood kids, but I didn't have a lot of people to share this stuff with outside of my sisters. So for me, this was this was something that was meaningful and that's the whole point of the block is it's it's to make you feel entertained again if you don't have to think about politics you don't have to think about social media you don't have to think about your troubles you can just spend two hours watching some of the greatest television ever made in my opinion and a lot of people were missing the point of this because you had a lot of people I, there was some there was some guy on instagram who was being stupid and he goes "Ugh, why don't they just make new stuff instead of trouting trotting out the old stuff and I wanted desperately to reply to him, but I've learned that you really don't do that anymore because people are just fishing for attention. I mean, they, they could have just been trolling. I don't think I don't think so, though. I think it's just somebody who is an idiot. The whole point of this is to bring back that classic experience for at least two hours and to reinvigorate that. When people are saying, I don't have linear TV anymore, but I want to sign up for, for, for this, I want to sign up for Sling or YouTube TV, which, by the way, that's what you got to do. If you're wondering because you're like, I don't want to sign up for cable just to watch this again. Sling TV is a good option. I think that's the first place you should go because I believe they have a trial. But YouTube TV is also a thing, although it's very expensive. Hulu Plus Live TV is a thing, but it's also very expensive. Um, some of these services, I don't know if they carry Cartoon Network or not, but I know Sling does. Most people know that Sling does, so they point people in the direction of Sling. So that's why I say you should probably go. And like I said, I believe they have a free trial. 
but I'm not entirely sure. If they don't, then I'm pretty sure they've got a pretty cheap tier that includes Cartoon Network that you could probably do. But absolutely go out of your way to watch this because the, the difference between this and streaming, and I'm not here to bash streaming, all right? As much as I don't like streaming, I've been I've been doing trials of streaming and trying to figure it out because I've had linear TV for so long. I just, I don't like it. The difference is, is that you have a presentation. You have bumpers, okay? You have lead-ins to a show. You have the credit sequence and the, the lead-out into the next show. You don't have to exit menus, you know? It's just show, bumper, commercials, bumper, show, that whole, rinse and repeat. And that's a great experience. These shows are, these are how these shows are meant to be experienced. That's what they were designed for. They were designed for a linear format to where they could be passed on to the next show and you just keep moving through them. Yes, it's less curated. Yes, you have less control, but you're, you're attending a performance. That's what this feels like, and that's what TV felt like back in the day. Although it was so common, it became mundane, but I think that's why this is so special, because that experience has been lost for so many people for so many years, and so many people long for the days when that was the norm, because it's comforting. TV is comfort food. That's how it's always been. And for many years, because of streaming now, they've just neglected it. And now they're starting to bring back programming that people like, and they're they're giving it a classical style presentation to hype it up and to keep people's attention engaged. And it works for me. I barely looked at my phone. I went to my phone afterwards to try and post on um, Facebook and uh, other social media about it because I was so happy with, with how it went. But for the most part, I kept my phone down. I barely glanced at it. I just kept my eyes glued to the screen. It's been years since I've done that with just TV. Video games, other things, sure. With linear broadcast TV, it's been years. And it felt so good to return to that. I felt like social media didn't exist for a while. And that's the best feeling in the world because social media sucks now. With the culture war and all of the political strife and all of the bad news that you get everywhere and just the modern culture which just feels brain dead going back to a simpler time feels good and this that's what this block is all about it's going back to that simple time and deriving comfort from that so this block is going to be keep going throughout the weeks for um throughout august and for the foreseeable future at five o'clock on adult swim it's going to be the introduction to adult swim which is really great hopefully they expand it uh, because everything after this is just King of the Hill, so there's definitely room for them to expand and add more shows, and I think that that's a possibility in the future if this thing does really well. And the other good news about this is that if this does well, hopefully Paramount and Disney and other companies will take notice and realize, huh, there's not only still an audience for linear broadcast television, but they still want to see their classic programming on linear broadcast television. But more stuff needs to be put into widescreen. I will say that. They need to find a good way to restore these shows to live screen or to adapt them to live screen. I'm not entirely sure how they do it, but they need to do it. This this block proved you put the love and care and effort into it, it's worth it. So whoever came up with this at Cartoon Network slash Adult Swim needs a raise. They absolutely need a raise because this is brilliant. I love this. I'm going to be watching it for the foreseeable future. I won't always be able to watch it on TV. I'll have to watch it on my phone a couple of times, no doubt. But I'm going to be tuning in every weeknight at 5. And it's just going to be ritualistic for me because I love this era of programming. And I love what they have recreated here. This is, this is a beautiful thing. And I highly recommend that people check it out. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Super Koopa TV with another edition of Toonie Talk, and I will see you guys next time. God bless. Have a good one. Peace.